what's up guys welcome to my channel for those who are new my name is Abigail I am 17 years old and I am a Christian and today I thought I would get on and share my story of how I even came to know Christ and my testimony and my deliverance story with that being said let's dive right in so here's some backstory so you kind of know what's going on so to make a very long story short I grew up with an abusive father um, so we're going to go ahead and start at the age of five when I was at the age of five and growing up, my mom always tried her best to instill God's love in us. She would read the Bible to us. She would buy like these Christian storybooks. She was always trying to make sure that we had a constant, what's the word I'm looking for? We wanted to make sure that she was constantly feeding us Christianity because my father, on the other hand, although he called himself a Christian, he is, his actions completely showed otherwise. Growing up, he would always twist the Bible. He would spiritually abuse us. Um, so he would take verses in the Bible, not tell us the whole whole verse, and then he would twist them to manipulate us into doing what he wanted it. It was very sick. Um, also, I remember him always mocking speaking in tongues. Like, that's what he'd always do. Like, he'd walk around the house and make different noises, and he'd always be like, oh, look at me, I'm a Pentecost. Like, he would always make fun of speaking in tongues. So I was growing up, in a very conflicting way. I had my mom trying her best to instill Christianity to us and my dad on the other hand blaring and just using the Bible constantly against us and just making a horrible viewpoint about God. He'd always say things about how, how God was only a God of wrath, how God was a killer and just all this off the, wall, off the wall stuff. And so growing up, I was already pretty confused. I turned, I think, I think probably eight is where I started to. By the age of eight, I was like, you know what? I don't believe there's a God. Like, I remember I was, I'll never forget, I was sitting in Aldi's, and we were about to go to the checkout. I remember looking out their big bay window, and I remember thinking to myself, there must be no God. Because I can't see a God. I don't feel like there's a God. My earthly father doesn't love me. Why would a heavenly father that I've never seen love me? And I remember wrestling with that thought. And even after coming to the decision of, oh, there must be no God, there was still that horrible void in me. Like, I knew it felt wrong, but it was the only logical answer that I could tell myself at the time. And so I just kept it to myself. I was dying to ask questions. I wanted someone to prove me wrong, but I had no one to go to. I was shown the truth through my mom, but I constantly had my dad throwing lies at me. And so I was just all confused and all mixed up. And so there for a couple of years, I was an atheist. During the next three years, I had a lot of troubles. I was super superstitious over everything. Like I thought if I touched one year, I'd have to touch the other or something bad would happen. Um, actually, it was this stuffed horse. For some reason, something in me told me that it was evil and I was scared of it. I made my mom put it in her closet because I was afraid something in it was going to come and hurt me. I was super superstitious. Super horrible. My thought patterns were... And I became super anxious over everything, always had anxiety. And I literally was just being ate alive and looking back by demonic spirits, 100%. And so for the next three years after I kind of came to the conclusion of there must be no God, that's kind of what went down. Um, I was super underweight. I never wanted to eat. I had problems with eating. And so that created new problems. And then at the same time, I was still being abused by my dad and all this other stuff was going around. I constantly felt unworthy. I constantly felt unloved. I remember thinking to myself, I must be so worthless because I feel so unloved. Like I just remember the horrible thoughts constantly going through my mind. Horrible, horrible thoughts because I had no Jesus. And I think I would have been 11. There we go. My mom became pregnant and she started having complications with the pregnancy and i remember I'm like okay god if you're real i'm gonna give you another chance like if you're real please save my sister and mary begging and praying for him for like i don't know for sure how many weeks i don't can't remember when i was told she was having problems but for sure a week and unfortunately my sister passed away on christmas day 2017 I remember being so mad. I remember shaking my fist at heaven, being like, God, if you even are real, I'm so angry at you. I'm so mad at you. I thought I could finally trust you and you let me down again like you've done my entire life. I remember I didn't even think about God. I most definitely didn't pray. I already 
was already having trouble with my faith in anyway for a solid three or four months. A few months went by and I think it would have been late March and um, my anxiety was just horrible. It had gotten better as I had turned 11, but after the whole incident of my sister passing when everything else went down, it got really, really bad again. And so I remember one night saying, God, if you are real, I'm please, I'm begging you to calm down and in this instant, calm my anxiety. And immediately the anxiety left me. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, you are real, God. Like, I, I could feel the Holy Spirit moving for the very first time in my life. And so in that moment, I gave my life to Christ for the very first time. And I was actually baptized, I think it was the following two months later, by my dad. And so, interestingly enough, the month leading up to the baptism, my faith kind of tampered down again. Like, I started already having doubts again. And I remember when I got baptized and it came back up, people were like, did you feel anything? I was like, no, I didn't feel nothing. Like, was I supposed to feel anything? No one, I should also, I should also mention, no one even correctly told me what baptism was. My mom told me, no, you did it because it's what God calls you for you to do. But I just, I didn't understand it. I didn't get it. All I knew is that I had to do it to get into heaven if that's where I wanted to go. So I think at that point, with my faith already tempering back down, I was just doing it to just get into heaven. The complete wrong mindset that was not the correct mindset to have. First time I got baptized, my dad walked me in, he dunked me under. There was no scripture read or nothing. It was done horribly on top of everything. Not to mention the fact that my abuser was the one who did it. Not to say it matters who baptizes you, but... It just wasn't done the correct way on top of everything else. Another two years goes by and the abuse from my father just gets worse and worse and worse. And I start dealing with depression and all these other horrible things again. Like it all just starts coming back. And I honestly started losing my faith again. Like my faith just gets less and less and less again as the years went on. It really wasn't my top priority anyway. Like it was something I go and I'd read the Bible once a day, yada, 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 close the book. I just did it to do it. I definitely didn't have a relationship with God. I'm not for sure. I really can't remember how I looked at God, but there was definitely times during those following two, three years that I lost faith in God completely again, just from everything going on and just from not being fed enough. In the age of 13 came, keep in mind that I had been isolated my entire life. My dad would keep us isolated from everyone, my four siblings and I. We were never even allowed to go to church. And so by the age of 13, I was lonely, like super lonely. I started begging God every single night. I'm like, God, if you're real, if you're there, please send me someone who will love me and will lead me back. I need someone. I am lonely and I'm tired of being lonely. And I think it was probably like four months later, four months later, like every night I would pray that prayer. And then um, we were actually remodeling our house. The room I'm sitting in right now, we were actually making because this used to be our garage. And I was really bored the day. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to get on YouTube and just watch some videos. So I typed in cool things to do in Missouri. And I found these YouTubers. And they were showing around something. They were showing an attraction in Missouri. And immediately, I just started to really enjoy them. Like there's just something about them that just drew me to them. I never trusted anyone growing up. And for me to just watch a video to automatically draw to them, looking back, was 100% God. So I watched that video. I really enjoyed the people. But then another like seven months went by, the next following year. And we were actually going to go vacation in the spot where these people lived. And so I started to get re-engaged in their content because I kind of forgot about them. And the more I watched their content, the closer they start to bring me to God. They were constantly talking about God, just constantly. And their love and their joy was just radiating through the screen. And immediately I started getting interesting again. Like, wait, wait a minute. This is a, this is a different viewpoint of Christianity. I've never seen this viewpoint of Christianity. And I could just feel the love of the screen. And as time went on and as they began to know me as a commoner, they were just always so kind and loving towards me. And they would always talk about, you know, we're kind and loving because that's what Christ wants us to be like. And me like, oh, wait a minute. Just maybe there's something more to this Christian. Just maybe there is a God. Just maybe, maybe I can start. So, you know, 
looking back, I was definitely intrigued by them. I was definitely interested in what they believed in. So a whole nother year went by and I actually had the opportunity to meet these people. I think it was back in, in 2022, I finally got to meet them. And I remember meeting them and just getting around them in person. I felt so safe and I felt so loved. Like a love I've never felt from someone before. Like a stranger for sure at least. And um, just being around them, I felt protected. I could feel God's love just radiating off of them. I didn't want to leave them. And so during this whole time, you know, my mind was wondering, I'm like, I truly do believe there's a God. Like just being around them, I could see God. And I remember after we met them, we got back home. Um, I remember I started opening up my Bible again. I started reading. I was interested. Only months after meeting them sparked something in me to get to know Christ again. So I started studying my Bible again. Most importantly, me studying the Bible for myself opened up a whole nother world because my dad my entire life used the Bible against me. So now that I had the Bible for myself, I was like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. This is not what I've been taught. I was, my mind was just blown of all the truth that I was finally learning. And I realized my entire life I had been fed lies. And I started to learn it for myself. And the biggest thing that I was interested in was speaking in tongues. I remember back how my dad would constantly mock it. And so I remember thinking to myself, I think speaking in tongues is real. I think it is. More time went by and I attempted to speak in tongues. Even though I, got, I never got it to happen right away, I still continued to press because I was confident that it existed. I was reading it for myself. I knew it existed. More time went by and I actually, it actually got really bad with my dad and the abuse. A lot of horrible things went down. I remember I couldn't take it and I asked my mom, can I please open up to these people? The people I had met through online. I was like, can I please open up to them? I said, I need to. I can't take it. She, and she's like, of course. She wanted me to open up. She realized the state I was in. So I remember opening up to them for the first time and just feeling the anger and the, the years of hiding just flow off of me. And I opened up quite a bit the first time. Can't really remember everything, but I opened up quite a bit. And I remember the lady, she just, she prayed with me afterwards. I remember that prayer had such an effect on me. I don't, think, I don't think I've ever even told her this. The prayer had such an effect on me. And I remember getting off the phone and being like, I, I'm, ready to, I'm ready to team up with you, God. I am ready to be a daughter of you again. I am ready. I am sorry, God. I'm sorry. I'm ready to start working with you, not against you. Together, we're going to escape this abusive household. Together, we are going to break a generational curse. And that's exactly what he did. I finally opened up to him the November of 2022. And then my mom finally got the courage to leave my abusive father January of 2023. And... During the, during the following months, I continued to not only get closer to my friends and all these other friends that I was now beating through them and I had known for quite some time, I was also getting so close to God. During this time, the friends that I had gone close to, they decided to start a new ministry. I would do live streams of them just preaching and stuff. And I remember listening to it and just being filled with the Holy Spirit and just like shaking. I remember they talk about deliverance stories. I remember... They would talk about the way people felt before they had deliverance. I remember sitting there in my living room and thinking to myself, I need deliverance. There's something in me. I can feel it. There's something in me that feels wrong that's trying to hold me back from God and I want it out. Like I knew there was something in me that was holding me back. I, I can feel it. I can't explain it. I remember begging to God. I'm like, please give me a chance to get to their ministry because I have to get there. There's something at that ministry that I need to get to there with. I just, I, I, I knew it. More months passed by and we actually went to vacation where they lived again once more and I had the opportunity to finally visit their ministry. And I remember walking up because my first time ever going somewhere without my mom with me. So I was like really nervous, but I got in there and my friends are so loving to me. I remember feeling so secure and loved by them. I walked and all the amazing people that are awesome made me feel so loved. I remember getting in there and sitting down and the worship music came on. I remember just raising my hands and just worshiping God, really like really worshiping for like the first time I just remember talking to myself, oh my God, yes, you're real. I'm so sorry again, God. I'm so sorry that I spent so much time away from you. But I remember also praying, God, there's still something in me that I want out. Please answer the calling that you've placed in my heart because I know there's something here that you need to do. The worship time ended and then the sermon came. And then after the sermon, 
my friend, the guy, him and his wife, um, they started praying over people. They were calling people up. And I was like, oh, God, please put it in their heart to call me up because I need help. As they were calling other people up, I'm like, what if they don't call my name? And then there was that voice in me of Abigail, just walk up and go. I remember sort of fighting that voice and being, no, 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 I don't want to go up. I don't want to go up. I'm scared to go up. And I'm telling you, I didn't make a rational decision. It was like my feet just, it's like I just stood up and just started walking. And like, I remember walking towards them. I'm like, what in the world? Like, I'm not making the, I'm not telling myself to do this. Like, what in the world? And then as I got closer to the altar, my feet became so heavy. And the sensation slowly traveled up my body till it got to my head. It felt like this decompressing state on me. As I reached the altar and as they laid their hands to pray on me, I collapsed. I remember at that moment, I couldn't even lift my head. I could feel the tension, all the, I could feel like something was pressing against me, trying to kill me. It felt like something was trying to smother me. I was like trying to fight against it. And then I remember and during this time, him and his wife, they start calling people to pray around me. And as they laid hands on me, I could feel the Holy Spirit battling something. And in that moment, I could feel myself lifting out of my body. I could like, I remember like there was a moment where I was looking down on myself and I was out. And I was watching. And I remember thinking to myself, like, it wasn't scary. There was this perfect peace surrounding it all of knowing that I was getting the help. I was getting set free, finally, from the things that had held me down my entire life. And I remember laying there. I was on the floor for like 45 minutes. I remember laying there all of a sudden. I sit up and I just start speaking in tongues. And I remember I couldn't control my mouth. I was just like, blah, 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 like just like constantly, constantly, blah, 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 like over and over again. I remember thinking to myself, oh my gosh, I'm speaking in tongues. This is real. Everything that I've studied is true. It's true. I'm speaking in tongues and I am a living testimony of it. And then I lay back down. They do more deliverance. I remember, I remember, I felt anger come out of me. I felt all these things just shoot out of me. Immediately, I felt control over myself. And I felt control over my mind and spirit. And it was such a, such an amazing feeling. I remember the ladies that surrounded me on the floor. They were on the floor with me for like quite some time. And they'd pick up and they'd hold me and they'd brush my hair and they'd speak wisdom. They were speaking things over me that I never told no one. They were saying things that I felt that I never told no one in my life. They were prophesizing over me and they were speaking truth. So I'm like, oh my gosh, God, you were so real. Like immediately the fear of God was also put in me. Like having people that I never even really met before speaking over me, saying things that I have been thinking my entire life and I ain't never told no one was just mind boggling. I'm like, oh my goodness gracious, God, I am listening. I am here. Like this is real. I started speaking words of comfort into me. As things started tampering back down. I could feel a peaceness surround me. Peaceness, a peace I've never felt my entire life. It's like a storm me had parted and was gone. Remember after sitting up, it's like kind of like confused. Like I remember like the moment where I kind of felt back in my own body again. I was like, whoa, what in the world? Like it was kind of like wonky feeling, really. I remember kind of sitting back up again. But there's just this peace. Peace I've never felt before. And I just there was just courage in me that I've never felt before. There was this authority in me that I've never felt before. I unfortunately lived like five hours away from this ministry, but I was finally able to get back after I think it was two months because I went and got my deliverance on June 27th and then I came back in August for my birthday specifically because I wanted to get baptized because I wanted to attend that ministry because that was the biggest birthday gift anyone could ever get me. And so I remember going again, had another amazing, powerful time, spoke in tongues for like 30 minutes straight, just amazing, I had God rolling through me. I remember after the service was all over, I went up, to the guy and I was like holy spirit was burning through me tonight it was amazing time I think it was the next day they baptized me just so amazing and ever since then I have been living for the Lord I have been ministering I have been working through people I have prophesied for another time but I have prophesied things that have come to pass just have had the most amazing relationship with God I've been able to minister to people, and now I'm telling my story here on YouTube, and I'm hoping it affects a lot of people. But yeah, there's my story of how I came to know God and my deliverance and all that amazing stuff. The biggest thing I'm struggling with is missing the ministry that I got deliverance at. Again, I live like four hours away from them, and so really hoping that I can move down there sometime soon, hopefully this year, and um, get closer to them because 
I'm ready. I feel very called to be down there. And so right now I'm just waiting for God to open that door because I'm very confident that I'm called down there to be with that ministry. I have no idea what part I'll play or what people end up helping or how much more I'll continue to learn. But I'm just confident of knowing that God is calling me down there in that direction. So I'm so excited to see what God will open this year. Yeah, I hope you enjoy the video and I hope it affected you in a positive way. And maybe someone on here who isn't a believer, maybe by hearing my story sparked something in you. And I'm praying right now that Jesus works through your life tremendously. And if you haven't come into Christ, that you will soon because he is real. He is alive. Take my word. I have been on both sides 100% from an atheist to lukewarm to 100% believer now. I am here to proclaim, I am a living testimony that he is real and he is alive. God is not dead. He is alive, warring like a lion. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Please give it a share if you enjoyed it to someone else you also think you might enjoy it. Please subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. It really mean a lot to me. And thanks for watching. You all are amazing and you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Bye guys.